Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is the first time I, uh, I come in touch with this uh, institute, so thanks for the invitation. Um, I was asked to make a keynote speech, and so this is well I prepared, but I have the impression there's more, uh, more interest in having uh, interaction, so maybe I'll try to keep my my presentation a bit shorter than I had expected because I uh, this is uh, maybe my mis misunderstanding but um, first of all I would like to share a few points that I uh, prepared and um, I tell in your brochure here um, interesting also to see that you uh, refer to Cummings uh, definition of cultural diplomacy as the exchange of ideas information values and with the intention of fostering mutual understanding. Behind all of this is the object of having a more peaceful world at ease with itself and for each of us to live as we choose. I think it's useful to come back to this because I have the impression sometimes that under cultural diplomacy and multiculturalism, we discuss a lot of different things in a way. And uh, it, it's, it's interesting to see how everybody approaches it from different levels, from identity, from nation states, from, from art, uh, from economic. Uh, so I will, of course, have my own interpretation here um, from different perspectives. But I think it's important that uh, we, we recognize also that during uh, over centuries, uh, people have, individuals have tried to organize themselves and their communities to avoid conflicts with different between different people specifically with different identities we in belgium are quite well placed for that um, and and to organize not only a fair society but also the institutions and legal uh, aspects in that context I would like to share a few uh, personal comments, uh, experiences, uh, and also as well as my professional experiences, because I have a range of. Uh, I've always been very convinced uh, that we, I've learned, lived, worked, loved, and thrived from early early childhood in a multicultural society, and I have been very strongly educated uh, from the from the perspective that. Uh, each man and woman are equal uh, and should be respected as equals. And maybe it is also important when we call, talk about cultural diplomacy to also go back into how education and, and schooling can, can play a very important role and has a very different impact in different societies in a way. Uh, I'm also convinced, uh, not only from the personal perspective, but also from the European perspective, that Europe is very well placed to lead on a lot of the efforts, not only in Europe, but also globally, because we have learned in Europe, uh, through the centuries of struggle, war, and enlightenment, uh, how human rights, tolerance, multilateral, and multicultural ideals really emerged. and how we developed institutions to try to defend, protect, and uh, step by step move forward. Sometimes a little step backwards and two step forward. Uh, these ideas and these values have evolved in Europe, but they are still very often questioned by some. And the debates that are going on for the moment around elections in Europe, but also in India, Egypt, Cairo, uh, show very much, U Ukraine also very, very soon, show how these, um, these values and these what we call aki are really not secured. And they have to be protected over and over again. And um, so, it is not something that we acquire and then we can live peacefully ever after. And I think this is some, also a lesson that Europe uh, learned and uh, le keeps, uh, keeps learning. The extreme situations that we are confronted or some people are confronted with for the moment, for example, in Nigeria or in uh, enforced uh, legislation against homosexuals in in Uganda or other countries in Africa, also show again how intolerance and discrimination 
is increasing in some in in some areas and some uh, continents and some countries or some populations so all of this to me to say that we even if we have the impression sometimes that there's evolutions in the right direction and institutions and legislation in the right direction, the clash, this clash is very often rooted in a very inherently uh, feeling that some people feel and think that they are superior above others. And that can be race, gender, uh, culture, uh, identity, and a range of ident identities. And that, I think, is important. Uh, I have also experienced that personally in a range of experiences. I've been working as um, I've been working in Africa. I worked, for example, in Mozambique, where there was a real, uh, real attempt to create a multicultural, multicultural uh, respect for different uh, races, ethnicities, uh, tribes, and so on. At the same time, next door, there was South Africa, where there was a legislation uh, to create a, a legislative uh, discrimination uh, with the apartheid regime. And that was just neighbors. But you can see how, how I mean, I lived also how the extreme differences uh, were created um, among these populations in a way that were very close neighbors and could have uh, lived uh, uh, well together. Uh, I've seen people brutally uh, in exile, brutally killed in Mozambique because they were hiding or uh, getting away from from uh, the apartheid regime in uh, in Africa. I've also lived through the genocide in Rwanda, which is again an example of extreme uh, rejection of uh, of the other uh, and uh, and an incapacity. Of um, of protecting uh, the other in a way in under uh, these brutal situations, I've had more funny experiences. Also, uh, I was uh, introducing at the the ninth of May, uh, the day of uh, Europe in China in the Shanghai uh, exhibition, and there I was standing looking at all of the. Uh, there was a parade of European. Uh, uh, member states actually presenting their different uh, uh, cultural uh, representations and the mayor of Shanghai was standing next to me and he said well it's very interesting to look at your minorities in Europe like this <laughs> <laughs> so I never heard member states being referred to as minorities actually but that's how the Chinese uh, looked at uh, all of these countries uh, representatives and finally, also at a personal level, I was married uh, I, uh, to an Afro-American jazz musician. And I'm sharing that with you because uh, he, uh, my, my beloved husband died in the meantime, so that's why I say he, I was uh, married. But uh, for 30 years, I really lived in a way the, uh, the discrimination in a different way. When I was alone uh, traveling as a woman, a white woman, very often I was treated very different from uh, traveling with him. Although he uh, accepted this experience much easier because he was born black in a way. I didn't accept this that easily because I saw the difference much more extreme. We were refused uh, to, to book into hotels in Egypt and in New York, and that is only in the 80s. In the meantime, the positive side of this is, of course, that uh, in the meantime, in America, we have uh, Obama as president, something that the civil rights movement, and including my husband, would have never believed that it would have happened in their lifetime. So in a way, for me, the positive side of the story is, is that there is hope and that things can change, actually, and sometimes faster than we believe if the right uh, efforts are being put in, in that direction. Um, so I have, in, I have lived as a cultural diplomat, in a way, my personal experience, but I also, in a professional experience, I have practiced uh, geopolitical and institutional organized uh, uh, diplomacy in multicultural. Of course, working in the EU now since more than 20 years, you work all the time with different cultures, different uh, 
attitudes, different identities, and I think this is, personally, I've always seen this as a richness. Uh, I would have never, never uh, wanted something else, uh, but you also see the, 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 the difficulties. You see, in one way, I see the young generation that is really embracing diversity in Europe and globally, on the other hand, I also see a reject still a lot of rejections of the other, including uh, what you refer to in the Roma population, Roma, Bulgaria. Th this whole discussion uh, is going way beyond, uh, beyond the pure economic uh, situations and uh, what they call the, the benefit uh, tourism and so on. So, so there is still a lot of that, and, and I... I have the impression that really uh, more needs to be done to create that peace and citizenship also in Europe. There's no real European citizenship. There is no real European identity being developed. When, when I was working on cultural diplomacy in, in, as, when I was the director of uh, representations in Europe, we developed a lot of products, uh, for example, for the elections. Now they do that again for the elections uh, coming up in a few days. And some of the products developed were really offensive for some, uh, some countries and not for other. So, and that sensitivity has not really been developed uh, very well within, even within the institutions and within the, 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 the cultural, mm, cultural uh, work that is being done or even the, the political work that is being done. I mean, one very good example for the moment is that uh, there was uh, uh, a Danish uh, video. I don't know if you, some, some of you have seen a Danish video for the, for the elections to try to mobilize people to go to the elections. It, was, it, it went quite viral, uh, but it was seen as most of the other countries, France or the UK, as, as very offensive. And so it was taken away, uh, it was taken off uh, of the, uh, but, but there again, the, the, the sensitivities uh, and the, the perception is, is so different sometimes. I wanted to share also with you, uh, I see that you ha we have some uh, people from the Netherlands here, but I, I recently read uh, a very interesting report I found about, uh, it, it discusses the political debate surrounding the national identity in the Netherlands. I mean, it is against the backdrop, a backdrop of growing public an anxiety about my Im immigrants. And I'm taking this because this is a report that, that is really very well studied, but I don't want to pinpoint the Netherlands as, uh, as separate from any other country, because I think a lot of that is also happening in, in my own country, in Belgium or in Flanders for that matter. But the, 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 the report finds that new integration strategies that were advanced by the Dutch government since the, the official rejection of multiculturalism in 2004 pushes the notion of cultural citizenship. The idea that being Dutch means adhering to a certain set of cultural and social norms and places the onus on the m minority to fit in the existing majority. The, the turn away from multiculturalism is reflected in policies that deny admission to prospective immigrants who fail in compulsory civic integration, exams and limit social assistance to non-Dutch speakers. We see this also in several other countries. It's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, choice that has been made and maybe it's a necessary choice for a while, but I question, but also the, 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 the writer questions in the report, that, uh, that choice uh, being made. It also shows very clearly in the report how the, the anti-immigrant political rhetoric in the Dutch society is very polarized, and you have also a, a, a broad so part of the society that sees uh, the, the multiculturalism as a very positive gain for the society. So you have both, both views very much. In, um, but the choice that is being made by, by national governments is sometimes uh, very, very difficult to, uh, to change at a certain stage. But 
the, the author comes uh, to a conclusion, basically, that it could also choose a more open notion of a national identity based on shared interests and experiences rather than the minority having to adapt to a majority. So there, there's choices that are very interesting to have further debate on. There's another uh, report that I, uh, or a book that I recently read by Collier, who I don't know, some of you know maybe as, a, as quite an interesting development uh, economist, but he, he, he wrote a book strangely about migration and how much is enough of the migration. And, and there also the debate is very interesting to see uh, these these reports, but these debates should also taken up much more, I believe, in the public uh, in the public domain to really uh, make the the, the 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 debate evolve. Because for the moment we have uh, quite a lot of division, um, and 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 sometimes um, obs obscure uh, decisions that are being taken. I, I believe that the EU is really placed in a very privileged position with the experience of integration, political and economically, uh, also to look further into the cultural integration without, while still respecting a diversity as the first uh, ambassador was speaking about. So it is not about harmonizing cultures or making everybody the same, but it is how do we create an identity that respects the other and integrates without uh, harmonizing uh, necessarily. So there's, I think this is a, uh, I, I see this as, as a real challenge uh, for Europe, but also for the world, uh, beyond uh, what we call also the cultural diplomacy experiences. Europe has worked a lot on Erasmus, uh, Leonardo da Vinci exchanging exchanging programs uh, for academics, uh, young people, exchanging vocational education. We've evolved it, we've extended this now also to Africa, to Asia, uh, these programs. So they are very positive. I think by now there's three million people, uh, three million young people that uh, benefited from the Erasmus uh, program. But all of this is uh, maybe some of you here um, it is it is interesting, but it is not enough to really create that that uh, uh, citizen uh, European identity. I believe so. I'm going to uh, cut a few things short uh, here, but in my personal opinion, I really think that cultural and public diplomacy in general can become a very much stronger part of Europe. Some of our forefathers creating Europe thought that culture should have been the beginning. But I think cultural and the development of cultural diplomacy and identity is a very is very critical, very important, but very slow progress process. So uh, I, I don't think we would have been where we are if we had started with culture, probably. So this is an was a bit of an opportunistic uh, choice, I believe. But that doesn't mean that it is not important. For the moment, what I hear very often as cultural diplomacy by the member states also, very interesting, even in my own country, we have Flanders cultural diplomacy and we have Wallonian cultural diplomacy abroad. Uh, we have the British Council, we have the French Institute, but I, I still don't see very much what is the European identity that we bring uh, we we bring abroad and and the values and the uh, that are going with this. So there's still a lot of work to be done in that area beyond uh, uh, what uh, what we see in in since centuries in the British Council and the French Cultural Centre or the or the Bertelsmann, uh, um, which are very strong, of course, as. Um, so I think this, uh, when, when I was invited to come here, I was a bit surprised. Uh, but on the other hand, I really uh, looked forward to have some further exchange and to learn also from what this institute and what you are doing, because I strongly believe in this at a personal level, but also in my professional uh, um, task. For the moment, I'm in charge of social policy. Social policy goes from, uh, in, in the context of 2020, for the moment, we focus actually very much 
research on the, the, the changes that are needed in the social welfare state within a very aging uh, society and, uh, and, um, and the crisis situation, of course. But on the other hand, I believe that there is, there is also in that context also much more cultural uh, exchange and diplomacy that could be done also on the context internally in member states also for integration inclusion uh, while still respecting other people's uh, dignity and uh, and uh, identities um, i want to fi finish uh, with uh, something that i uh, always uh, that keeps me um, that keeps me focusing on the dilemma that we are confronted with and that's from the philosopher popper he, uh, there's a lot of uh, people that don't like uh, or, or like uh, uh, this philosopher very much, but I think on on the cultural uh, aspect and cultural identity, he's uh, written something that always keeps me very much on track. And he says, we have to live in part in a specific culture or cultures with their local restrictions, which serve to give us our specific character and identity. While in part we live in this wider liberal culture of an open society. It is no mean task to construct a self, a cultural identity which can handle these issues. But this is the task we need to be able to accomplish and in which it is important that we get as much assistance as possible from the culture in, we, in which we are socialized. So all of this serves to highlight one of the most important tasks, I believe, that is that we are confronted with worldwide, but that is also um, that is I hope uh, Europe will further be able to lead on, and that's to reconstruct our institutions, our culture, and indeed ourselves, so that we can thrive within an open society. I believe, therefore, that culture is something very important very close to identity but it is not fixed it can move it can be created into something even more conducive for a safer society and a, and a peaceful society thank you very much thank you Dr. Le uh, for this um, enlargement of the notion of cultural diplomacy to the social sector and uh, to other issues we haven't uh, dealt with so far today. So any questions on this? There are many fields covered here as a lecture from Africa to the uh, to Belgium. Um, please. Yes. Building a real a genuine European citizenship based on a European common identity. Thank you. I, I, um, t I think this is at the heart of what I try to share with you also. I, I, I think we need to do, we will need to evolve more and I, I really hope that young people like you can spearhead this of also more, is, is to have different layers of identity. You can have, that's what Popper also says actually, you have your local identity that you have been raised in, that you have been, that you, you feel at home with, but there is different identities that, you, that, that, don't, that don't contradict each other. I mean, I can be Flemish, I can be Belgium, I can be European, and I can be a world citizen, and I can adapt and, and, and accept and, and, and thrive, actually, on all of these. I don't need to make a choice, uh, I feel. But that, to me, is also something that needs to be educated more. Uh, I think young people do this easier nowadays because I think they identify very often with uh, American culture, for that matter, uh, through uh, through the media and uh, and and not necessarily always with their uh, with their own background culture uh, or background uh, the culture that they have been raised in. So so I think this is possible. So I'm I'm very hopeful for this. 
but uh, it also requires uh, it requires also more uh, education educational programs more exchange uh, and more respect for each other i believe oh, okay uh, hello first of all um, i am elena uh, alania from georgia uh, my question is, uh, firstly, thank you for your you know, very interesting speech. I'm uh, it's interested. How do you think now in the modern world, in the world of globalization, is there any danger that nations will lose their identity, cultural identity in the globalization? Thank you. Yeah, I, I, in my, but it is all, only my personal opinion. This is not a position uh, from some. But I, my personal opinion is really that we. I mean, some countries have more stronger uh, nation identities. I, I've grown up in a country that doesn't necessarily have a very strong nation identity, uh, and I have grown up also with different. Uh, different cultures and moving around a lot so uh, but uh, i i think it's also easier for country for people coming from countries that you don't have that strong national uh, national identity in a way but uh, i do believe that uh, even in a globalized world that we will have to uh, develop these different reference points for your identity so it's the same answer for me uh, i don't think we are only uh, only what our nation state is developing or, or, or creating around us. I mean, um, so I, I don't, that's my personal opinion. And, and I think this is also where, where a large part of the young people that I see uh, uh, growing into. But on the other hand, I see also at local level, sometimes very often the least educated, the most uh, discriminated, very often uh, um, rejecting that and i think the trick will also be or the the challenge will also be to to include those people very much uh, more than 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 to have this di di uh, divergence i think the divergence for the moment is a danger my name is mr shamalo Thank you, doctor, for your presentation. Uh, and what I'm interested to hear that you are from a Flemish uh, community. And uh, I wanted to ask you a question, which is not personal uh, about the Flemish community, but uh, also because they are in Europe. What is it? Uh, the Flemish community are scared in Belgium because Belgium is becoming more European, let's say worldwide institution. Why Flemish? They are more scared and they are more extreme in, at this time. Thank you. I think the, uh, the the question you ask is 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 much more than uh, beyond culture. I think it's also it's a very political question, of course. I I, I think the Flemish uh, Flemish people in itself are very globalized and very pro-European people. Uh, the, the 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 difficulty is the national identity and the and the national. Uh, the different communities in a way so if you refer to the the the, the walloon brussels and flemish there is clearly a, a political difference a different perspective that is moving with a lot of history that i have been part of and my family has been part of but i don't really think that we should be necessarily discussing this another aspect that is happening within you, uh, within Belgium too is 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 a rejection of uh, mig migrant populations 
And that is a little bit the same as what is happening in some other countries, including in the Netherlands or in, in the UK. And that is, to me, inside uh, uh, the divergence that I'm talking about. And we really need to do better, not just between the nation states, but also inside. Mm -hmm. And that's why I refer to that, the Netherlands report, because that's a choice that needs to be made. How you define that integration, is it by, by uh, by having people reject their own identity and include themselves in a majority identity, or is it uh, a more pluralistic uh, acceptance? That That is fundamental for a lot of the societies also in Europe, including in Flanders. But, uh, but I believe that is also in, 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 in Wallonia, that you, you have that in, in the UK, you have that. I think you have, a, a di what I'm, I'm seeing, you have a di dichotomy actually of some, some more, um, uh, the, 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 the more um, educated, the better off populations very often embrace that more. Then uh, the the and I think for the moment that is increasing mainly among the populations that are less well off that are uh, unemployed sometimes because there is this insecurity feeling that um, yeah. Um, thank you, thank you so much for your speech. Um, my name is Caroline. As I said before, I'm from the Netherlands. Um, I find it very interesting, as you are mentioning uh, Holland and its um, policy towards uh, anti-multiculturalism. I've been thinking, obviously, in the, last, um, in the last 100 years, there's been a lot of migrants coming to Holland. And some countries um, have adapted easier than others. Obviously, some uh, cultures have more strong identity that they prefer to uh, express more. So, for example, the Indonesian culture or the, the Chinese um, citizens within Holland have been uh, easier adapted, as I would say. Uh, there's less of an, an issue in the media. Um, to what extent can the European Union, because obviously Holland has set some policies to say, okay, you have to integrate um, in, in a certain way, as you have to do tests, you have to learn Dutch, etc. And to what extent can the European Union um, set example or set policy or guidelines to say, well, these would be good ways um, for people, for migrants to um, integrate but not lose their um, identity. Thank you for your answer. Um, for the moment, the European, the, the, the Commission is very reluctant to intervene in any of these discussions. So that's why I share this my opinions as a personal opinions also of course because uh, uh, because of the tensions also between uh, what should be decided at country level and what not but i think an institute like this and your debates uh, could just f foster more understanding and that's why i say i mean the example of the netherlands and the example of scolias uh, i just use only as this should uh, i mean institutes like like this should and and parliaments and should discuss this much more i i don't think no anybody has the right the, the final answer but there has been societies uh, where where integration uh, in a pluralistic society has been more successful than others uh, and, and so we can learn from each other, but we also have to learn how to evolve in the future. And I think for the moment, the situation is, of course, uh, very uh, under, under, um, under the, 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 the economic situation that uh, populations are living in for the moment. There is much more insecurity and therefore much more, um, you see that from the countries, but you see that from the people also closing up on themselves and rejecting the other more. So I hope that once we get out of the crisis, that we can also build more. And 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 I believe that institutes like uh, like yours could uh, could really help foster this uh, debate because I think it's my by by debating and 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 talking to each other that we will learn how to do it better. I think.